You know what annoys me? People on eBay who sell fake pens. Because they dupe other people, it's very annoying, and it's a, a shame, a scandal. It shouldn't happen. I was contacted by Zach. Zach bought a, a Mont Blanc pen on eBay. I got it here. Uh, and um, uh, he he thought it was real, and it turns out to be a fake. And that's really annoying, because Zach is a nice kid, and now nah, he was duped. So uh, he sent the pen to me. I checked it out. Um, and indeed, I see some issues with it. Now, I'm not going to review this pen. What I want to talk about today is a bit of a nettle bush uh, of topics, which is how to spot a fake Mont Blanc. Now, there is a good thread on this on Fancy Pen Network. If you just Google it, how to spot a fake Mont Blanc, you, you'll find some good pointers. Uh, I thought I'd just go through it. So, this will not really be a review of this pen, um, it will just be me trying to give you some pointers that hopefully can help you in not um, well basically being screwed when you buy uh, a Mont Blanc pen okay so here are a couple of things uh, to, to look out for alright I have with me here two genuine Mont Blancs a 146 and a 149 and then I have Zach's pen which is as you can see, closer to a 144 in size, but it was sold to him as a 146. So that's where the pain starts, so to speak. Okay. Here's a list of a couple of things you can look out for. First of all, Mont Blancs are among the, if not the, most expensive pens on the planet. Yes, I know you have your 10,000 euro limited editions, your 100,000 euro limited editions. But when it comes to the regular Mont Blanc pens, the Meisterstück range in particular, those pens are very expensive. I think a 149 right now goes for $900 or something. That's a lot of money. So if you find a Mont Blanc on eBay or any auction site or on a pen show or whatever, and you find a 149 that is advertised as being in perfect working order for $100, it's fake it's extremely unlikely to be the genuine article, right? So remember the first rule, and that applies to all pens, everything you buy at an auction site. If it sounds too good to be true, it is. Not probably, it is. Okay? Yes, it's possible that there was this friendly lady whose grandfather passed away. He happened to have a Mont Blanc. She doesn't know what to do with it. She doesn't know what she has, and she decides to put it on an auction site for $50. Yes, it can happen. It can happen at flea markets, at trunk sales, uh, all that kind of stuff. But it's extremely unlikely. Usually, people know what they have. The White Star is quite well known. So, there's the first pointer. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Secondly, I think a good uh, uh, thing that someone actually mentioned on eBay, uh, sorry, on, on the, uh, the Fountain Pen Network, this is definitely not a, um, a definitive thing, something that will definitely tell a fake Mont Blanc, but I did think it was a good one. Ask the seller if he has more of those pens. If this is a $900 pen, and you say, I am considering buying a couple for friends, because they're only $90 or $10, whatever, and he says, oh yeah, I have 50. It's not really likely that a guy has 50 $900 pens lying around, right? So you can ask if there are more available of that specific model. Okay, third pointer. Now we're getting to Mont Blanc details. Um, I am no Mont Blanc expert, but I do own a few, so I can tell you what I have seen and learned from experience, all right? A um, couple of things. First of all, the Meisterstück range with, I believe, one or two exceptions, is a piston filler range. One, four, nine. One means the tier of the pen. 100 range is Mont Blanc's flagship Meisterstück range. There was also a 200 and a 300 range. Okay? The second number indicates the filling system. The four means their telescopic piston. The 146 has it, the 149 has it. The 146 Traveler does not. But that has to say Traveler. That is the only cartridge filled 146. All right. Then there's the 144. 
I believe that is an exception too because it takes cartridges and converters but that is uh, a vintage pen I believe I'm not sure if it's still being produced in any case that's the that's the only two exceptions to that four rule and then the last number in the indication of the the uh, the, the model number uh, is the nib size 149 has a number nine size nib Montblanc uses a different system from other manufacturers so the 146 has this nib that is not a number six nib it's a Montblanc number six all right but the thing is a piston filler is hard to make. It's hard to make a knockoff of because you need a lot of precise tooling. It's much easier to just make a section and slap in a converter. So if you buy a pen like this, zagged it online. Now, okay, this is difficult because this is a 144 size pen. But the filling system here, it was sold as a 146, remember. The filling system is a converter, all right, cartridge converter. Now, one thing I will say is there is such a thing as a Montblanc converter, but this is not what it looks like. Um, this is a cheaper Chinese converter. Uh, you see a lot of plastic there, and uh, Montblanc converters, as far as I know, do not look like this. Also, the word Montblanc was on there, but you can just scrape it off with your thumbnail. Um, that's a big indication that something is odd. But clearly, you can't see that in the picture. So we have money. Right? If the price is too low, it's probably a fake. Um, we have asking the seller for more identical products. And as to the pen, so far what we have is the filling system. If it's not a piston filler, it's probably fake. There is no such thing as a 149 that takes cartridges. So be aware of that. All right. Now there's a couple more things that you can, uh, you can check, but you have to hold the pen in your hands for that. All right. Um, the material is uh, precious resin. All right. It has a very specific feel to it. It feels quite smooth, but it doesn't feel like cheap plastic. When I hold Zach's pen, it feels cheaper. It does feel like a different type of material, whereas my 146 again has that same feel as my 149. Now this is very hard and I wouldn't go blindly at, uh, at that as a, as a guide because you have to hold the pen and feel it, right? But if you get some more experience with Mont Blanc, you probably know what I mean. Um, okay, now there are a couple of things that you have to look out for and that you can ask the seller about. One thing is, I'm going to use my loop here, on the side of this band that holds the clip in place, there should be a serial number. You see it? Right there. Now, I'm not a Mont Blanc expert, but this has two letters and then a bunch of numbers. Um, I'm going to check on my 146 as well. Um, that two has two letters and then a bunch of numbers. And on Zach's pen, same thing. They even used, this is Zach's pen, I'm going to show you this again. This is my 146. Um, it's a very crafty thing he got. Wait, 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 wait. Where are my numbers? Wait, oh! It's very hard to do this, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, there we go. These are the numbers on my 146, and then here are the numbers on Zach's pen. You see they even use the same font, which is quite impressive. This, as I said, this is a pretty high-end knockoff. All right, um, as far as I know, Montblanc's use a screw-on uh, the Meisterstück pens use a screw-on cap. Um, Zach's pen has a slip-off cap. So that's another giveaway. Okay, another thing you can see on the uh, clip band is the word... Oops. Is the word Germany. Uh, wait, focus. Why is it so difficult focusing today? Germany. Okay, 
that should be on there too. That is again there on Zach's pen. Now, here is something that I'm not even sure if I can show you, but if you look at the underside of the clip, yeah, you can see it at about that level. That's very hard. Let me switch on the light of the loop. Maybe that helps a little bit, although it may reflect too much. Ah, uh, there we go. You see that? There's a word there, right in the center. PIX. P-I-X. From the 1990s onwards, uh, Mont Blanc's uh, have that. I believe it's 1997, but I'm not absolutely certain. Again, I'm not an expert. Modern Mont Blanc pens should have that word underneath the clip. But if your pen doesn't have it, don't be startled immediately. My 149 does, my 146 doesn't, but this is not a knockoff. It's just from before the 90s. So, okay. Zach's pen has that too. And what I think, to be honest, is what they did is they either made a very good replica of the clip or they made, they took an original Mont Blanc clip and put it on a fake pen. Um, that's, I think, what they did, because the word PIX is there. However, I can't really show you this, I think, um, but there is something about the way the word is written. It's written in fairly, uh, a fairly fancy script. Let me see. Uh, da -da -da -da. Where is it? Here we go. No, I can't really show you this very well. No, sorry. Um, but believe me, on, and this is why I think they didn't take an actual Mont Blanc clip, on my 149, the word PIX is written in an extremely crisp engraving. On Zach's pen, uh, it is also there, but the engraving seems to be a lot more shallow. It's not as crisp. Uh, so anything that doesn't look crisp could be fake. Okay, on the center band around the cap, there should be the word Mont Blanc. Oops, sorry. Uh, sorry guys, it's very hard. I'm, I'm holding all kinds of things in one hand. It says Mont Blanc Meisterstück, and then it says number 146. On my 149, it says, again, Meisterstück number 149. Then again, it has that PIX. You see that? On the center band, too. And then it says Mont Blanc. As I said, my 146 doesn't have PIX because it's before the 90s. Zach's center band, first of all, it's not gold. It looks less crisp. It says Mont Blanc Meisterstück. Oops. And again, it has the pics on there. Um, but it doesn't have a model number, uh, which is interesting. And that too, the engraving, when I put the two next to each other, the engraving on my Mont Blanc is a lot more crisp than it is on Zach's pen. In the, in the actual Mont Blanc pens, the engraving is filled with dashes, um, which are very subtle, whereas on Zach's pen, they're very sharp. Um, so as I said, it's a crafty counterfeit, but I do believe it is a counterfeit. All right, so we have that. So there is a bunch of things you can check on the pen. The picks, if it's after the 90s, or a pen from the 90s, um, you have the material, the feel. Um, another thing that's very important to check out, and that's the final thing I can tell you, so we have the filling mechanism as well, right? That's another good thing to check. Um, another thing is the nib. You can usually see a lot from the nib. Okay. This is my 146 nib. It's a two-tone as you can see, the writing is very crisp. It says 14K Mont Blanc, and I believe at the bottom below that it says 585, but you can't see that because that part is sunk into the section. You have the Mont Blanc star, you have the crisp M in there, you have 4810 in there, and then you have the actual nib. Mont Blanc does not indicate 
on the nib what the nib grade is. So it doesn't say E, F, F, B, uh, O, B, whatever. It doesn't do that. Montblanc doesn't do that. Here is my 149 nib. Again, very crisp. Um, and again, it says at the bottom, 18K Montblanc 750. Um, and all very crisp. Let me just check what that final thing is. It says... Uh, yeah, I'm assuming that is a hallmark, which I'm sure my 750 has as well, except I can't see that because it's sunk into the barrel. But we're here now. I just pulled the nib. I want to make this as detailed for you guys as possible. No, this nib does not have that hallmark either. That's a pity, because it would have been a nice giveaway. Now, if we check out Zach's pen, um, again, a decently crafted fake nib, but one thing that I seem to notice is, it, to me, it seems less crisp, uh, the engraving. And also, yeah, the 14K. In the Mont Blanc pens, the, the carrot is really engraved very crisply, in a very crisp line. On Zach's pen, it is much more um, rounded off. It is not engraved so nicely, so that definitely is a giveaway. Everything on the nib should be extremely crisp. Um, and all the details are a lot less pronounced. Uh, the scroll work is a lot less pronounced. It's much less uh, sharp and, and clear uh, than on both my 149 and 146 nibs. Yeah, that is a big giveaway. So although they did a really good job on Many of the trademarks, the picks, uh, the center band, I think they uh, have messed up with the nib. I'll try to show you that again with the light of my loop on so that you can really see the difference. So here you have this nib from Zach. Uh, note the 14K, right? Note how that is engraved. And then compare that to my 149. Note how crisp the scroll work is and how crisp... I'm going to switch off my light here. Note how crisp the 750 at the bottom is in the 18K and then compare that with this. Okay, final giveaways on uh, pens that are slightly less uh, less good um, imitations is that Montblanc never stamps their nibs with Iridium Point Germany. There is one exception, I believe, in the Skywalker, I believe, but all other Meisterstück pens, uh, the Meisterstück pens, are, do not have Iridium Point Germany or Iridium or something like that on there. So if that's on there, it's definitely a fake. Um, and I still believe this one is a fake too. Also, almost all of these pens have gold highlights and on these they are chrome. There are a few pens that have platinum highlights on Mont Blanc, um, but I really believe that what we're dealing with here is a, um, a pretty uh, good imitation. So yes, it is definitely a, um, a fake. For what it's worth, uh, I think it is not the worst fake out there, but it's still a fake. Now that doesn't mean you can't enjoy the pen, uh, it doesn't mean it will not write, because it does write, but clearly it's not what you purchased, and it's a whole different discussion of whether we should condone imitations. Um, but there you have it. So this was a long video. I hope uh, you were able to, to bear with me. I hope this has given you a couple of pointers to look out for uh, on, on spotting fake Mont Blancs. Um, 
if nobody buys them anymore, then hopefully one day they'll disappear. But I don't think that's very likely to happen. In any case, this is the best I could do. I'm sorry it was so long and hopefully not too boring, but um, that's what I got. I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.